Okay, check this shit out. I'm up in Northern California. I'm visiting my sister. One of my favorite and her favorite things to do up here is to go mushroom hunting. So we're in California. The mushroom season runs roughly November to March, really depending on the rainfall. This year, we have not quite had so much rain yet. This is December 2023, early December. Uh, but there's been en enough rain to get things going and where we're hunting in the north coast, there's fog drip. And so the forests are kind of moist from fog coming in from the ocean. Uh, we just went out yesterday, we came back with like, I don't know, five or 10 pounds of mushrooms, delicious choice edibles. I wanna show you what you can forage right now in California. Uh, I wanna give you a couple of quick safety notes real quick. Number one is I am not a mushroom expert. I eat, I collect and I eat these mushrooms and I've never died. Don't take my advice. Don't take anyone's advice. If you're eating wild mushrooms, make sure you yourself are 100% sure you know what it is. Don't just eat something that someone gave you or someone sold you in a park, okay? Uh, so for me, my rule is if I don't know what it is, it's toxic. That's my mental rule. If I see something, it's toxic. If I know what it is, then I'll chance eating it, okay? Uh, each of these mushrooms are kind of easy. I'll show you these are really easy ones to identify. In California, they don't usually have a lot of lookalikes. I'll go through them one by one. Um, when I find a new candidate, like these are new mushrooms that I've been finding, and uh, I kind of know what I'm looking for, and I see it, and then I'll use an app. I use this app, iNaturalist. And iNaturalist will give me a candidate ID. Don't trust that. Then I go to the books and I cross-reference it in multiple books to make sure that the mushroom I'm eating is the one I think it is. So you really, really want to be careful. People and even experts die eating mushrooms. Uh, usually it's when they go to the expert level and they're doing hard stuff where the mushroom needs to be a DNA test or something to identify. These ones that I'm collecting are really, really easy to find. They're really easy to identify and there aren't a lot of lookalikes. So we'll walk through these in a minute. One note about collection is that we like to use these blueberry clamshells. So, you know, I buy my blueberries and they come in these, save these up for the year. These are great because they'll stack in my backpack. I can get four in my backpack. They keep the mushrooms organized. They keep them from getting smashed. We try to organize them by species as we're collecting. One really, really important note, and it's not, it's hard to do this, but uh, we really want to keep the dirt out. You put one mushroom in there with dirt and it bangs around, especially if it's a gilled mushroom, it'll get all in the gills. It's impossible to clean. So work really clean. Um, some mushrooms are so filthy or so rotten, we just leave them in the field. We're looking for food here, so we want to make sure what we're getting is good. So I think I've got um, six or seven species here. We'll walk through them quickly. I'll show you the keys that I'm looking for when I'm identifying them. And then uh, you guys should get out there and get some mushrooms. One of the easiest ones to find all over the place is an oyster mushroom. Oyster mushrooms kind of, they call it that because it's kind of shaped like an oyster. That's it. It's a gilled mushroom. The gills run all the way up to the stipe and it's a short non-central stipe so it's usually growing out of a stump like sideways like this and they're usually in a big cluster so you can see i have a big I have a big group of them here this is a gilled mushroom we don't actually collect that many gilled mushrooms but this one we do it smells a little bit they say like licorice it's pretty easy to identify um, you can go buy some at the grocery store to kind of learn what they look like and the ones that are out in the wild are basically the same mushroom and these are delicious. Um, the cool thing is you can actually farm these on food waste, you know, agricultural waste, but finding them wild is pretty cool. We're gonna turn this into a mushroom pie. Another choice edible is the chanterelle. So it's a yellow mushroom. This one does have some sort of look similar, we'll say. There are a lot of yellow mushrooms out there, so it's really easy sometimes you see yellow and you run up and it's not actually a chanterelle, it'll be a false chanterelle. There's a couple key things you wanna look for on a chanterelle. Number one is they don't have true gills. So I don't know if you can see that, but it's more like kind of wrinkles. And this one's a good one where you can see the wrinkles are kind of, um, they fork. Unlike a gill, like I just showed you. See, that's gills, where it's actually kind of like tiny little mushroom razor blades. These are just more like, uh, like a fingerprint, okay? Another key thing you're looking for in a chanterelle is that it should kind of break apart like string cheese. It should shred, like you can see here. This kind of shreds like string cheese. Uh, so as long as you don't have true gills and as long as you shred, you are, you know, this is probably a chanterelle. Again, uh, if you think you have an ID, you should use the app, iNaturalist, ID it, then go to the literature, cross-reference to a few books, and then start slow. But chanterelles, are really, really easy to identify once you learn that you're looking for these, uh, I forget what they call these veins, but or folds, but they're not gills. You don't want gills. There's a really toxic one called the jack-o'-lantern mushroom. 
it's a yellow mushroom. It gets really big, but it has true gills. So it's really easy if you do the string cheese test and you look for the false gills to find a chanterelle. The next one I want to show you is called a yellow foot. Uh, we also call them tubies because they're it's a tube. It is actually literally, you can uh, open this up and you can see it's hollow on the inside. These, they also will call them winter chanterelles. You can see it has a similar chanterelle kind of gill pattern. So that's a really easy way to recognize it. Um, these are really delicious. These are kind of my second favorite mushroom out there. They should have a hole in the top. They should have the false gills and they should have a really nice, beautiful, like yellow color. These ones dry really well. A couple of them in a soup impart a really nice flavor. Yellow feet, chanterelles, winter chanterelles. We call them tubies because it's a tube. There's a look-alike that is a more of a domed, classical domed mushroom top, or sometimes flat, but it doesn't have the tube. So if you cut this thing lengthwise and it's not hollow, that's not a tubey. Don't eat those. Uh, those ones are also kind of have a slimy top. I don't know what they're called. I only learn the ones that I can eat. Another choice edible is this black trumpet. It's also a chanterelle variant, it's a cousin. They also call it the cornucopia. It looks like a cornucopia. You'll be walking along the woods and what you see is kind of like that, like a hole in the ground and there'll be a little cluster. We're pretty early right now in December. We haven't had a lot of rain, but by January, February, these things will be everywhere. These are delicious. Um, sometimes people call them poor man's truffles. They have a really nice fragrant, you know, shroomy flavor, almost like a truffle. It's, you won't mistake it for a truffle, but really nice perfumey kind of funky flavor. Black trumpets, delicious. One of the most prevalent mushrooms we find is the hedgehog. They're really easy to identify. They've got this cream tan top. They also have a dimple, but they're not hollow. They're solid core. But here's the key. Instead of gills or fake gills, they have teeth. See that? That's a hedgehog mushroom. There are some other mushrooms with teeth. There's one that bleeds the red juice. You've probably seen a picture. Those have teeth. But generally speaking, this is a really easy mushroom to identify. It's got the cream colored dimpled top. Uh, the big ones don't always have a dimpled top, but here you can see a small one has a dimpled top. And most of what we find is these small ones. These guys right here are like trophy size. But here you can see there's the teeth. That's a hedgehog. That's a really delicious. I just ate a bunch of these for lunch. It has a really nutty flavor, fried up in butter, eat it with some eggs. Really delicious. This is a choice species. Uh, it's a variant of a porcini. It's the genus is, uh, or it's Boletes, it's Boletus. Um, I believe this one is a queen porcini because it's got kind of that purple red top. This is a delicious choice edible. You can see that it doesn't have gills or uh, spikes or fake gills. What it actually has are pores. This is a solid surface with tiny little holes. So this is its form of gill. Uh, they call these pores. So there are a lot of pore mushrooms out there um, I think generally speaking, if the pores are white and if you cut it and it doesn't stain blue, it's edible. Double check me on that. This one I've eaten before. Again, I know, I think it's called a queen bolete. So you're looking for the white pores. You're looking for the top that is tan or reddish, but not like real red. Uh, you're looking for this kind of webbing on the stipe here and no veil or anything. These ones get really buggy, so this one's going to be a little bit buggy, but that's a delicious... Uh, these ones just kind of, you know, honestly, they taste like a store mushroom, but stronger, like more mushroomy, but just the, kind of the standard mushroom flavor. But the texture on them is what makes them fantastic. You can slice these really thin and eat them raw, like sashimi, um, or you fry them hard in butter, and it's almost kind of like a mushroom steak. It's really delicious. We only found one of these. Normally in our spots, we find these in the fall if we've had an early rains. If we had rains in October, we'll be finding these in November. So finding it in December, in my spot, we haven't had a lot of rain. I, th I think it was kind of just a lucky find. There are probably more out there. I just only found this one. Okay, this is the last one I'm going to show you. This is Matsutake. This is what I was trying to say. This is a really valuable, um, I think in Japan, they pay 40 or $50 a pound for this. You can see this is what it looks like when it's coming out of the ground before it opens. It has sort of a veil. So that's what you can see here. It has a covering over the gills. And then as it opens, it kind of explodes open. This is, this is what happened to the veil. You can see it has a, a veil remnant still here around the stipe. Um, I don't want to say anything rude about it, but you know, it's a sheath 
that gets peeled back when the thing opens up. This is a gilled mushroom. You can see it has true gills. The gills come down and they touch right up to the stem. There's names for all this, like they call it decurrent or whatever, and I, I haven't learned those. I kind of just learned, like I said, the individual mushrooms. It should have kind of a white top mottled with yellow and brown. Some of that is still dirt, but some of it is just the stain on the mushroom. And one key to this thing is if you smell the gills, it smells like red hots, like cinnamon candy. So there is a lot of lookalikes for this. This one is more expert level. There's a whole family of mushrooms called Russula that are white tops, white stems, white gills. They look a lot like this, but they don't have this partial veil remnant on the stuff, on the stem, and they don't smell like cinnamon. So these are prized mushrooms. Uh, and again, a great way to get expensive ingredients for free, essentially, for, or for exercise. So, just quick review. We started, uh, we didn't start, but these are the chanterelles. They have the false gills, beautiful yellow color, California gold. Um, they actually also come in white or different shades of yellow. I have some white ones, but they, um, they're drying right now. These are the oysters. They look oyster-like, gray, smell a little bit like licorice, sort of. They have gills. These were the Matsutakis, gilled, delicious, partial veil, smells like red hots. These were the yellow feet, winter chanterelle, tubies. They have a tube running down the center, delicious. Hedgehog, have the teeth. Black trumpet, looks like a cornucopia. And porcini or bolete, queen bolete. Okay, so that's it. Delicious one, two, three, four, five, six, seven species of delicious culinary mushrooms. All of them would go for a lot of money in the store. All of them are delicious, cooked correctly. Um, this is my favorite time of year, coming up to Northern California, walking in the woods, bathing in the forest, uh, and eating delicious, earthy foods that humans have been foraging and eating for millennia, 100,000 years. So get out there, get some mushrooms, have fun and be safe. Don't eat anything that you don't know what it is.